coming. Let's withdraw the Lord. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing any. To die? To sleep? No more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished to die. To sleep. To sleep. Chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's a respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely, the pangs of disprized love, the laws delay, the insolence of office and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare buck. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose boon no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience doth make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly o'er with a pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pitch and moment. With this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Talked you now. Therophilia. Nymph, in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Good my lord, how does your honor fall this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long it long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. <laughs> no, not I. I never gave you all. My honored lord, you know right well you did. And with them words of so sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. <laughs> Their perfume lost, take these again. For to the noble mind rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Do you want us? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly! For the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a board than the force of honesty can translate beauty to his own likeness. This was sometime a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me, for virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I love thee not. I was the more deceived. <laughs> Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I'm very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do? Crawling between earth and heaven, with our knaves all believe none of us, go thy ways to a nunnery. 
is your father. At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him that he may play the fool and know of it in his own house. Very well. Help him, you sweet heaven! If thou hast many, I'll give thee this play for thy dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calumny. Get thee to a nunnery. Go on quickly, too. Farewell. What if thou wilt needs marry? Marry a fool! For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery, go on quickly, too. Farewell. Oh, I've heard them paintings too well enough. God has given you one face and you make yourselves another. You jade, you amble, and you lisp, and you nickname God's creatures and make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to. I know more on. It hath made me mad. I say, there will be no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one shall live. The rest shall stay as they are. 